I'm excited because I'm excited to see people go in there. You know, I've heard people complain, well, my seats were here and they were here. My seats should have been here. I think once they go in, a lot of those issues will go away because they'll be surprised at how great it is. I think everybody will be surprised. Now, there's 8,000 fewer seats, but the seats that are there are bigger. There's more leg room, and the whole stadium experience is going to be a lot more fun. Take the pirate ship that'll be firing off cannons. Little footballs will be coming out, confetti, all sorts of celebratory things. There's going to be a pirate village, a whole cove where you can go and enjoy some entertainment as well as get concessions. And the man at the helm of that pirate ship, if you will, is none other than head coach Tony Dungy, a very special man, a very special head coach, a guy we can be very proud of because he's a lot deeper than just the X's and O's of the game. He's a man who gets respect from not only his staff and his players, but from all around the NFL and from the fans in the stands. Tony Dungy is special in another way, too, because Tony Dungy has learned to be a head coach in the NFL and still balance it with being a good husband and a good father. A few of our players have their, their uh, sons and daughters here. Something that we encourage, because even if we won a Super Bowl, if we weren't able to have involvement with our families and have our kids be around, that wouldn't be very good at all. It's Bucks training camp. A day when the organization Family First has invited dads to bring their sons and daughters too. The speaker is Tony Dungy, head coach of the Bucks and spokesperson for Family First. Hey, it's great. We love our job with the Buccaneers, but it's not near as much fun and not near as important as our job of raising our families. Uh, we represent the city of Tampa, the area. And again, that was one of the things the players had to buy into. They could have said, it doesn't make any difference. I'm paid to play, and that's it. But uh, we don't have a lot of guys like that. The guys understand our job as role models, as mentors, as, as people that young people, especially young boys, look up to. A unique stance in the world of pro sports. Then again, Tony Dungy is unique as a man and as a coach. He didn't come to the Bucks with the reputation of a Ditka or a Johnson or a Parcells. Everyone comes in new and you've got a program and it all sounds good, but the players have to believe it, they have to believe in it, and when that program gets tested, uh, whether they believe it or not is going to determine where you go. And when we weren't winning and we were struggling early in 96, uh, that's when it got tested, but the players hung in there, they, they believed in the system, and when we started having success, then it just kind of snowballed. But snowballs don't ruffle Dungy. Describe Tony Dungy by his music and you'd hear soft jazz, the kind of music they heard when he was guest DJ locally before training camp. Uh, hearing from the Rippingtons, from the Curves Ahead CD, a tune called Ask. An easy beat, a calmness, a patience. But is he that way in the locker room? Uh, I have some things that are very important to me, and, and I'll get upset from time to time. But generally, I, I've always felt that being steady, being, um, you know, the same pace and the same key is important. This unique man whose strength is in his stand now readies his team for the 1998 season. And? Well, the expectations are higher. That's one of the things that we wanted to do, and it's up to us now to, to really fulfill those. Tony Dungy, a very special man to have heading up this Tampa Bay Buccaneers squad. John McQuiston joins me now, and John, although obviously he has a great interest in the offense, Tony Dungy's roots as a coach really were defense. Yeah, he was a defensive secondary coach, then a defensive coordinator before he came here. And for all the talk we've done in the offseason about the offense, the, the upgrades they've made, the improvements they expect, it is defense around which this team is built. It is defense which defines this team. And it may be a man named Monty Kiffin, who defines the defense. Aggressive, intense, all over the field, enthusiastic, excited. All words you can use to describe the Buccaneers' defense and to describe Buccaneers' defensive coordinator, Monty Kiffin. But what's it like just Having a group, when you being the coach of a defense, that should be pretty good. You hey, this is a lot of fun. Set, post set, find that ball. His mind moves so quickly, he starts answering before you can finish the question. Well, yeah, good Ask the players good. about Monty. What, what's it like playing for Monty? <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
Everybody laughs when I ask him that. Why? <laughs> because Monty is just, uh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I never had a coach like Monty. He's just a... Uh, He's almost like another one of the players. Oh, well, sometimes you got to pay attention because you can't really understand what he says. You know, every now and then he'll get riled up and, you know, say a little something. And don't think, don't he's kind of stuttering most of the time, so it's just kind of jumbled all up. Huh? You know, you know, uh, Back in oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, um, we, 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 we got to do better. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If they're laughing, I want to find out who's laughing. And you're gonna, I'll, go, I'll make them run some gassers after practice next time I see them. Go oh, hard, go hard. Quite a contrast to the calm countenance of head coach Tony Dungeon. Uh, they're, they're probably direct opposites. I mean, although they, they both have a, a great knowledge for football, their, their approach to the game is a bit different. Back in yeah, let's go! I saw that from clear back here! You don't need, uh, you know, 10 guys jumping up and down like me, you know, and you don't need 10 low-key guys. I think that's what Tony looked at when he picked his staff. You do need 11 guys who can tackle. For a long time, Hardy Nickerson was one of the few on this defense who could. Now Warren Sapp and John Lynch are just two of Hardy's fellow pro bowlers on the Bucks defense. That's great. That's great. <laughs> it takes a lot of pressure off. Everybody understands the role with the defense, and uh, we play well together, and I think we complement each other very well. You make yourself good, you make yourself a target. Don't think there aren't teams that wouldn't like to shut Sapp's yapping trap, but they can't stop Sapp without leaving Cheedy free. On defense, they relish the role of being the force that drives the team's success. It's on, it's on us, you know, it's on us. If the offense doesn't have a good day, it's on us to shut them down, you know, and uh, if we don't take care of that business and we put that on our shoulders and, and, and we do it happily. There's a lot of pressure because, I mean, teams are, are shooting for you. I mean, they're, they're bringing their A game every week. I mean, there's no relaxing when you play the Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense, and uh, maybe before there was. There is no relaxing when you play on the Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense either. Monty Kiffin sees to that. Well, yeah, good players always make the coach look good. You know, I always look at it this way. You know, when you win, it's, you give the credit to the coaches. When you lose, blame the players. Well, he's got a sense of humor. It used to be that people laughed at the Buccaneers, and now the Bucs and their fans are smiling, in large part because of the defense that Monty Kiffin coaches. Coming up, Chris Thomas with an interview with Bucks general manager Rich McKay on the team's commitment to winning. And then Dick Crippen meets Hardy Nickerson on a football field of an entirely different sort. You want to see that one?